welcome to Valley Creek Kids. Yes, welcome kids. I'm Miss Polly and this is Miss Sarah. Hi. Yes, and in Valley Creek Kids, we believe that hope is here, everyone is welcome, and Jesus changes everything. So whether you are joining us in person or online today, we are so glad that you are here with us. Yes, we are. We're going to have so much fun playing games and worshiping together today. It's going to be a great day, especially because it's almost Christmas. Yes, it is, Miss Polly. It's almost Christmas. It's the end of the year. So to kick things off, we actually have a question for you guys. Oh, we do? Oh, dearie, that's right. We sure do, kiddos. You have 30 seconds to find someone near you and get to know them a little better by talking about your answers to this question. What's your favorite food or drink to have during the holidays? Why? Oh, I'm already thinking about my answers, Miss Sarah. Good, Miss Polly. All right, so kids, you have 30 seconds to talk about it with someone near you. And if you're online at home, you can tune in to me and Miss Polly. Yes, kids, don't be shy. Yes, okay, are you guys ready? Set, go! All right, so Miss Polly, what is your favorite food or drink to have during the holidays? Oh, Miss Sierra, my favorite drink is a nice steaming cup of hot cocoa. Hot chocolate, classic. What about you? I also love hot chocolate. I love to put uh, marshmallows in there. Oh. That is a must for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I also love to have pie. I feel like there's always pie around the holidays. I love apple pie. Yum, I love cabbler. Okay, okay, kids, time is up. All right, so kids, I hope that you got to know someone a little better. Now, how about we all have some fun together? Come on, it's game time. Okay, everyone, today we are gonna play Will It Float, Christmas edition. <gasps> Oh boy, my son Danny loves this game. Here's how it works, kids. You drop different items into water and you see if they float or not. Exactly, but kids, Miss Polly, today, instead of water, we have hot chocolate. Mm, yeah. Yum. <laughs> yes, so here I'm gonna add some candy canes. Oh, yeah. Of course, we need some marshmallows, right? Mm. Like oh, I yeah. said, don't be stingy, Mrs. Sarah. <laughs> no, I love marshmallows in my hot chocolate. All righty. Delicious. <laughs> okay, so uh, just like Miss Polly said, we are going to drop each of these items right here into the hot chocolate and we're going to see if they sink or float. So I'll hold up an item and if you think it's going to sink, then you yell that out. And if you think it's going to float, then you'll yell that out. Then we'll drop it in and see what happens. Oh, I can't wait. Let's play. All right. So kids, our first item is a cookie cutter. Mm. So what do you think, kids? Is this cookie cutter, this Christmas tree cookie cutter right here, will it sink or float? Shout out your answer on the count of three. One, two, three. Okay. Well, let's find out. Here we go. That definitely wow. sank. <laughs> that sank so fast! Okay, are you guys ready for the next one? Mm -hmm. Okay, our next item is this bow right here, like what you would wrap a present with. So what do you think, kids? Will it float? Shout out your answer on the count of three. One, two, three. Okay, well, let's find out. Here we go. Yep, it floats. Okay, are you guys ready for the next one? Our next item is this piece of Christmas tinsel right here, like you'd put on your Christmas tree to decorate. So what do you guys think? Will it float? Shout out your answer on the count of three. One, two, three. Okay, all right, well, let me get it ready to drop in. Here we go. Let's see what happens. Oh, Ooh. it I would say that oh, it's... Oh, Miss Sierra, it's, it's progressing. It's slowly sinking. It is a slow sinker. You know what? I'm going to actually say, I mean, since it hasn't sunk yet, it floats. Woo! It floats. 
Okay, well, that was a tricky one. Okay, are you guys ready for the next one? Our very last item is this Christmas light. Okay, so what do you guys think? Will it float? Shout out your answer on the count of three. One, two, three. Okay, well, let's find out. Here we go. It floats! It floats! I thought for a second it was gonna sink, but it popped back up. It floats. All right. Wow, Miss Sierra, that game was so much fun! It was, wasn't it? Kids, thanks for playing with us. Okay, now for the rest of our time together today, as we're celebrating the season, the end of the year, we really just wanna take time to remember what God has been speaking to us, to remind ourselves of everything he's been doing this year. Oh, that's great! Yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and start shifting our focus towards God. We're all gonna stand up and worship Him together. Well, come on then, kids, let's stand up! And kids, as you're standing, I want you to remember, God is here with you right now, and He loves you so much. As we worship Him by dancing and singing, remember that worship is more than a song. It's about our hearts. This isn't about the dance moves or how our voice sounds. This is us responding to God's goodness and His love and how amazing He is. So, come on, let's worship. It's my favorite time of year Gifts under the tree Baking cookies at my house Christmas lights all around It's my favorite time of year And it's all just celebrate that the greatest gift that I'll ever get came to us when heaven sent Jesus, Jesus on Christmas holy. Love it. Thanks for worshiping with us, kids. Now, nobody sit back down yet. God is amazing, and we have discovered so many things with Him and about Him this year, haven't we, Miss Polly? 
Oh, yes, we have. We have. And there are four things we've discovered more about this year that we really talk about every single week in Valley Creek Kids. So who can tell me what those four things are? Oh, 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 dearie, are you talking about the four truths? Yes, I am. Kids, every single week we discover more about our four truths, that God is good, Jesus has forgiven me, I am loved, and everything is possible. I am so grateful for those truths. They are the foundation of everything we believe. They tell us the story of who God is and what he has done for us. They show us his heart for us. So while we're all still standing, let's speak them out loud together right now. Absolutely, let's do this. Three, two, one. God is good. Awesome. Kids, you can go ahead and sit back down. So those are our truths. God has taught us so much about each of those truths this year. And what's amazing is that we aren't done discovering those things. There is always more of God's heart for us to discover. Oh, that is so true, Miss Sarah. Now, kids, go ahead and get settled, get comfy, because right now we're going to continue remembering what God has been speaking to us in 2022 as we tune in to one of our favorite Valley Creek Kids messages from earlier this year. How fun! What message was that, dear? Oh, well, it's one that our friends Mr. Doug and Miss Haley got to share with us where we discovered that God is inviting all of us on a journey to follow the cloud. Oh, of course! Yes, I remember. Following the cloud means to courageously take next steps when we see God move. That's right. And we discovered that God's inviting us on a journey of following the cloud, a journey of following Him as He leads us one next step at a time to go places, do things, and discover our four truths in a way we've never experienced them before. And kids, it's not a journey that He was just inviting us on just just earlier this year, following the cloud is a lifelong journey. So right now, let's take a look back at this message and be reminded of the journey God invites each of us on to follow the cloud. Sounds like a dream. Here we go. Hey kids, I'm Haley and this is Doug. Hey guys. Right now, we're discovering that God is inviting us on a journey to follow the cloud. But follow the cloud? What does that mean? Are we talking about looking up at an actual cloud in the sky and following it around like this? <laughs> well, guys, no. <laughs> but actually, for the Israelites, a group of people who we read about in the Bible, that's kind of what they did. And we're actually going to read the Israelite story in just a minute. But when we say follow the cloud, what we really mean is to courageously take next steps when we see God move. That's right. And guys, next steps are anything we think or do that moves us forward on our journey with Jesus. And like Doug said, the Bible tells us all about a group of people called the Israelites who really did follow the cloud. And there's a lot that we can learn from their story. Yes. So we are going to start reading that story right now. Here we go. The story can be found in the first half of the Bible, the Old Testament, in the book of Exodus. A long time ago, there was an ancient group of people called the Israelites. They were special. They were God's chosen people. They were. That means that God set them apart from the world and chose to show his love and glory to the world through his relationship with them. So for 400 years, the Israelites, God's chosen people, lived as slaves in Egypt. But God saw that life was hard for them. He heard their cries for help, and He decided to rescue them and give them a better life. God rescued the Israelites by raising up a man named Moses. 
Moses was an Israelite who had been raised in the house of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. When he was older, Moses left Egypt and became a shepherd until God told him to go back to lead the Israelites out of Egypt and into freedom. Moses was scared to go back and talk to Pharaoh, but God promised to be with him, so Moses went. So Moses confronted Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and God moved in a big way. You see, Pharaoh didn't believe in God, even after God performed miracle after miracle after miracle through Moses. But eventually, Pharaoh agreed to let the Israelites go. In a matter of few short days, God had defeated the entire nation of Egypt. God set the Israelites free. He did. But what do you do after hundreds of years of living as slaves? Where do you go? Now that they were free, the Israelites had a choice to make. They could either go back to a life of being slaves, or they could choose to follow God, a God that they were still unsure about and still getting to know. You see, God was inviting the Israelites to follow him out of Egypt, through the desert and the wilderness, to a place they had never been before, a place called the Promised Land. The Bible tells us, by day, the Lord went ahead of them in a pillar of cloud to guide them on their way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, so that they could travel by day or night. God gave the Israelites an actual pillar of cloud and pillar of fire to guide them. How cool would it be to have a giant cloud in the sky telling you where to go? It's like God was saying, I'm going this way, follow me. Yeah, because the cloud wasn't just a cloud. It was God's presence with the Israelites. God was the cloud. Yeah, like he wasn't sitting in the cloud. The cloud was actually his presence. So the Israelites followed God, followed the cloud on their journey to the promised land. They did, and guys, it took 40 years. But eventually, the Israelites did reach the promised land. They didn't always understand where they were going, and they never really knew what was going to happen next on their journey. But when the cloud moved, the Israelites moved. When the cloud stopped, the Israelites stopped. God led them every step of the way. Wow, imagine how much the Israelites did and discovered during that 40-year journey. They went to places they had never been, did things they had never done, and discovered more about themselves and God than they ever had before. Exactly. We believe this is the same journey God is inviting us on today. Yes, except the cloud isn't in the sky above us, it's within us. Not like an actual cloud inside of you though. Instead of giving us a cloud, God has given us the Holy Spirit, His presence living inside of us, leading us and guiding us. Right. And our journey to the promised land isn't a place to go, but a journey that we're on to discover that God is good, Jesus has forgiven me, I am loved, and everything is possible. A journey to go places, do things, and discover those truths in a way you've never experienced them before. And just like for the Israelites, it's not always easy to follow the cloud, but God promises to always be with you. And because of that, the journey will be better than you could ever imagine. So now that we know God is inviting us on a journey to follow the cloud, what do we do next? How do we get started? Well, it's really just two things. First, we hear God's voice, and then we follow Him, taking one next step at a time. That's right. Did you know that you can hear God's voice? Because you can. Yeah, if you have received Jesus' forgiveness and become a beloved child in God's family, then you can hear God, your good Father's voice. He is always speaking to us. We just have to learn how to hear Him. That's right. Because guys, God's voice isn't usually as obvious as a big booming voice coming from the sky. God can speak to us in many ways, through things like music, dreams, other people, and most importantly, His words in the Bible. Yeah, no matter how God speaks, we know that everything we hear Him say will always match what He has already said to us in the Bible. Yeah, however He does it, God is speaking to you. That brings us to our next part of following the cloud. After we hear God's voice, we respond by doing what He says, following Him, 
taking one next step at a time. Yes. So with the Israelites, God didn't just give them a map and say, here you go, here's the whole plan. Right, Doug? <laughs> right. Instead, he invited them to follow the cloud, stopping when it stopped and moving when it moved. They couldn't see the whole map. They just got one next step at a time. Well, that's how it is for us too. When God speaks to us, he doesn't usually give us the full picture of where he's leading us. He gives us small steps to follow. See, when the Israelites were still slaves in Egypt, if God had given them the whole map, they would have seen 40 years of wandering in the desert and the wilderness in order to get to the promised land. And at the time, that would have felt like way too difficult of a journey to them. It would have been overwhelming yeah. and they might have said no and never even made it to the promised land. Wow. So instead, God just told the Israelites to simply follow him, trusting him enough to take just one small next step. That's so good. You see, with us, God invites us to trust him enough to take one small step forward. And each time we take a step, doing what he says, our trust in him grows enough to take the next step after that. We don't always understand where each step is leading us, but we can trust God even when it seems hard or doesn't make sense. Because wherever the journey leads us, we know that it will be good because God is good. So guys, that's what it looks like to follow the cloud. We hear God's voice and we follow him one next step at a time. That's right. Guys, I am so excited about this journey God is inviting us on. I can't wait for us to start courageously taking next steps when we see God move. Following the cloud is an adventure, that's for sure. And God is with us the whole time. That's right. Well, that's all we have for you now. Let's pray before we go. You guys can close your eyes to tune out distractions and hold your hands out like this as a sign you are ready to receive what God is saying to you today. Father, thank you so much for inviting us on this journey to get to know you more and be with us every step of the way. In your name we pray, amen. You guys can go ahead and open your eyes. We'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye. So God is inviting us to follow the cloud. We get to hear God's voice and follow him one next step at a time. I'm so glad we got to be reminded of that today because following the cloud isn't just a one-time thing, it's a lifelong journey. Oh, you betcha. Okay, now, since we took the time to look back and remember what God spoke to us through that message, how about we play a little review game? Here's how it's gonna work. I'm gonna say something and you guys are gonna tell me if it's true or false based on what we've discovered. Ready? Ooh, a quiz! Okie dokie, I'm ready. Are you ready, kids? I think they are. Okay, first one, true or false? We follow the cloud by looking up at a real cloud in the sky. We follow the cloud by looking up at a real cloud in the sky. True or false, shout out your answer. That can't be true, that's false. False is right. The Israelites followed an actual cloud, but for us today, following the cloud has nothing to do with an actual cloud. We follow the cloud by courageously taking next steps when we see God move. Okay, next one, true or false. Next steps are anything we think or do that moves us forward on our journey with Jesus. Next steps are anything we think or do that moves us forward on our journey with Jesus. True or false, shout out your answer. Oh, of course, that one, that one is true. Yes, that's true. Next steps are anything we think or do that moves us forward on our journey with Jesus. We get to live our life hearing God's voice and following where he leads, one next step at a time. Okay, last one, true or false. On our journey of following the cloud, God is leading us to a place. On our journey of following the cloud, God is leading us to a place. True or false, shout out your answer. Hmm, I really don't think 
I don't think that's true, so I'll say false. You're right, Polly, it is false. We aren't on a journey to go somewhere. We're on a journey to discover someone. Our journey to the promised land isn't a place to go, but a journey that we're on to discover that God is good, Jesus has forgiven me, I am loved, and everything is possible. Isn't that cool? It is. Okay, so kids, how about we all respond to what we just discovered, to the amazing things that God has been teaching us this year by worshiping Him together. I love that idea! Kids, stand on up! Let's worship! Yes, let's worship. Kids, you can go ahead and sit back down. We are so glad that you got to join us today as we celebrated and remembered what God has been speaking to us this year. In a minute, some questions are gonna come up on the screen so that you can continue to talk about it with the people around you. Oh yes, and kids, this is important because when we talk about what we're discovering, it helps us to think about it and actually apply it to our life instead of forgetting about it. Oh, forgetting! I forgot about my kiss roll in the oven, Miss Sarah! Oh no, okay, well you can check on that in just a second, Miss Polly. Okay, so uh, kids, um, in a minute we are gonna talk about it just like Miss Polly said, but really quick, how about we all say our truths together one more time? Oh, yes, I'd love to. Ready? Ready. God, God is good. good. Jesus, Jesus has forgiven me. me. I, I am loved, loved and, and everything, everything is possible. possible. Awesome. Well, we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.